Okay, so this one is going to be about um, kind of how, especially as a player, but it also applies to being a DM. But this one is more is going to be about like how you might prepare for like eventualities ahead of time. At least kind of how I do it, and then inevitably when you're caught off guard and sometimes you freeze up. So, uh, in our, in the most recent uh, Curse of Strahd game, uh, where I'm playing uh, Senlir the Zealot Barbarian, we were currently in like a big, big underground dungeon under the city of uh, Galaki that, um, by the way, is uh, very off book. That is not something in the module, it's something that DM is just kind of throwing in. Not kind of throwing in, that diminishes it. But um, we're in this big dungeon, so none of us have any real idea what to expect, what the hell's going on here. Um, and as far as we know, you know, there's just a big dungeon, there's lots of uh, like locked up undead creatures and stuff that we've found so far. So I'm kind of prepared for that kind of thing. And one of the players is absent this session. So the DM switches gears slightly. And actually, they were planning on doing this a kind of one-shot for this session. As far as I could tell, it was going to be our characters, but like a separate weird situation. Like a one-off situation that just pop pops up, then we kind of get back to it. So, but... Uh, the map they wanted to use ended up like roll 20 wouldn't accept it so in the moment it's just like all right we're just gonna do something else instead whatever so we just went back to essentially the normal game and we ended up finding something that the DM was uh, saying was supposed to happen kind of a lot later but they moved it up because we were missing a player which seems like a weird kind of choice. Like, it, I thought it would have been fine to just kind of go through more of this dungeon, but, you know, whatever. We find this door that's different from all the other doors we've found in this dungeon so far. It's glowing with a green light. It's really strange. And as the players, we know that this is essentially the thing the DM has prepared for us tonight. So... As the players, hey, we should do this thing, whatever this is. But you can't ignore the characters being cautious to open up any door in this big, elaborate prison dungeon where they were explicitly told, don't let anything out. So there's that give and take between the players know that this is what they're supposed to do, and the play and the characters are like. I don't want to do that. That's a bad idea. It, there's always a give and take between the players that want to hit the button and the characters that don't want to hit the button. So, that's always a thing. But, we kind of meander around it a little bit. We end up using this uh, this mirror that can cast legend lore on something once per day, which is a, a really cool, flavorful item, I think which I'm totally going to steal. Um, but, more or less, through this vision, we see a bunch, like, 20 cultists take this woman into this door and then close it, and then time speeds up for a little bit, and then, like, a few hours or a day later, you know, a, sh a relatively short amount of time later, the door opens back up, and 19 cultists come out, and they're all, like, drained of life and decrepit and desiccated looking. And then that's it. So like, okay, we go in the door. <clears throat> we go in the door, and there's that, like, one cultist sitting there kind of meditating-ish. And there's that same woman in a big glowing green magic circle, and she's tearing herself apart slowly as she also regenerates at the same time. So, seemingly unkillable woman just sitting there in this magic circle that she can't get out of. We talk to the dude, and he tells us, Oh yeah, the, uh, 
we were a cult trying to bring our God back. This woman was supposed to be the vessel, but at the last, at the 11th hour, uh, we caught a glimpse of what our God really was. It was this nightmare entity called the Dream Eater. I think it was called the Nightmare Eater. Something like that. Some horrible entity. So they altered the ritual at the last moment, and instead of allowing their God to completely possess this entity, this this woman, they sort of trapped it, or as far as they knew, they trapped it and prevented full possession, but ever ever since, that cultist, that leader cultist has been kind of maintaining this magic circle with his own life force slowly, and it's been centuries, I guess, it's been a long time. So we're discussing this back and forth, and he doesn't have a whole lot of guidance for us. He just explicitly says he has no idea what's going to happen when uh, this thing is released. And it, and he's going to die soon. And it's going to be released. So we just kind of have to figure out something. And this is another one of those cases where there's a disparity between what the players know and the characters know and what they should do. So We know that we have to reason, try to reason with it or deal with it once the circle fades. And uh, we know, hey, the most powerful dude we know is old Rickety, the super high level wizard. So maybe we should go get him or bring this creature to, to him. So we end up splitting the party, which is just always a bad idea. My barbarian and our wizard stay behind to watch, just watch the situation, and the three other characters go off to get rickety. Now, one of the issues here is that the smooth talker, the face of the group, is one of the ones that leaves. My barbarian has some decent charisma but he only has proficiency in intimidation, and he can support any sort of uh, persuasion. He can, he can act in a supporting role for these kinds of like social situations, but it's a little more difficult for him to like uh, spearhead these types of things, depending on the situation. So he's not the best for these types of things, and then the wizard is a wizard. He's not good at those either. And that wasn't something we necessarily thought of. But as we're sitting there, the cultist has like a momentary dip, starts coughing and effectively starts dying. And the circle starts to flicker. And this creature inside gains some perception of the outside world and then dominates my barbarian's mind. I fail to save and it forces me to kill the cultist releasing the thing. And then this incredibly powerful entity um, kind of humors us for a little bit, and I kind of freeze up. All I can think to say is, or one, I was expecting this thing to be more hostile or something. I just kind of didn't, I felt like I didn't have a whole lot of information to go on. So, it being more, more cordial kind of threw me for a bit, threw me a bit, and all I can really think to ask is like, hey, would you come with me? to go talk to Rickety, because that's where they're going, and I'm like, I'm hoping as we go, like, walk back that way, the, uh, the rest of the group is coming back down with Rickety, and, of course, this super powerful entity takes this as a deal, which may have been my fault, because I asked it to do me a, do that as a favor, so, probably not the best language on my part, but again, this was a case where I kind of froze up. And it offers like, okay, this is a deal then. If I do this for you, you owe me a favor in the future. Unspecified. Great. <laughs> so I'm kind of struggling with this. I, my character prays to their goddess for a little guidance. Like, is this, is this their fate? Is this what they're supposed to do? I fail the role and don't get a whole lot. So like, okay, great. Which, in retrospect, I've had inspiration sitting around, so I probably should have used it either on the Dominate or on that religion check something. 
but as that goes on, like me, like my character and the wizard are just kind of like, uh, okay, sure. One, because as players, this is a cool plot hook, but as characters, it's like, ah, uh, shit. <laughs> so it's not an easy thing to like really rect rectify, and we both are kind of freezing up. Then she teleports us back to the town square where the rest of the group is already kind of walking by and, the, and they're just kind of like, yo, what the fuck? Then we go to Rekdi and we complete this deal. She gives us some information and then she ends up giving us all a free feat as like part of this deal, which is great, but theoretically this feat could be taken away later and there's some stipulation, you know, any kind of dark deal, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, that whole sequence was very different than what I had, like, mentally prepared for in my mind. And you can always think of, like, better stuff to do in retrospect. Like, I could have used the, um, <clears throat> I could have used my inspiration to not get dominated. And then, at that point, Sen Lear, my character, would have then walked up to the circle activated his ASMR transformation, maybe as an intimidation tactic, maybe to try to be on the same level as this creature, or just, you know, just like a, like, not a misguided or doomed to fail attempt to just, like, converse with this creature, but it just would have been one of those cool things, and I would have been finally able to use that ASMR transformation, but which I'm starting to get the feeling I might not use it until the new uh, Monsters in the Multiverse comes out in May and I get the new version of the ASMR and switch to that, which lets you do that as a bonus action. So, you know, that's the thing. Um, anyway. So, when this happens, um, or I could have done that, in retrospect, but this is also the type of thing, like, it felt kind of bad in the moment, it felt like I had failed in some way, and I think the wizard player also kind of felt that way, but now, like, this is just going to change the trajectory a little bit of the character story, like, we have this entity that we are somewhat beholden to in some way, which we've got a lot of those right now in that campaign, but also, you know, my character has been kind of questioning exactly what he's doing here, and maybe this is one of those big, one of these, like, fate-altering moments that he was sent into Barovia to do, like, in the grand scheme of things, while releasing an entity like this is probably a bad idea. Maybe at the end of the day, this is where fate has to go. This entity has to get released so it can be properly dealt with if you want to look at it from that angle or like it can be properly dealt with or just this powerful entity can be released and heroes have to be dealt with so that the narrative can continue along the way it's supposed to or at least can continue in a way that's proper and quote, interesting to the higher powers that are above the gods or control fate in ways that the goddess of fate can't control it. Which, spoiler alert, I guess it's the DM. <laughs> um, because that's one of the main one of the main themes I have in mind for this character. Like threads of fate and the narrative, the story, like whatever your whatever is supposed to happen to you will, and that's what your story will be. Sometimes it's gonna suck for you, but it's still just part of your story. Um, yeah, I guess that I guess that's it. Just you know, sometimes you freeze up, and that's okay, but. Um, and the story's gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, I have some other thoughts I might record, but they don't quite fit onto this video. So, that's it for this one.